very often you'll find this topic of body cavities at the beginning of a study of anatomy. You'll do the sectioning of the body into anterior, posterior, words like that, and possibly uh, the introduction of the body cavities. I've waited until now to do this because we've had a lot of organs and we've looked at them, seen where they're located, we know a little bit about them, so when we mention what organs are in which cavities, you're not starting from zero knowledge. Now we haven't done the kidneys and the bladder yet, that's the next drawing, but most of these, like all the intestines and the stomach and the liver, we've already done. So hopefully it'll make sense to you to put this lesson in right here. And then the mesentery, which is the the second section down there is related to the intestines. There are three main body cavities in the torso. Well, actually the official list includes two others and I've put them over here. Just FYI, meaning for your information, there are two others here. So the actual official list is one, two, three, four, five. But in the torso, which means the main section, not the head or arms or legs, there are three main cavities. And we've already had these words, actually. We haven't officially introduced them as body cavity names, but we've been using these words. This top area up here above the diaphragm is called the thoracic. T-H-O-R, Thor, Asic is A-C-I-C. -C. So you have a C that has a soft sound, S, and then you end with the C with a hard sound, K thoracic. And then below the diaphragm here, we've also mentioned this, we have the abdominal. So number two down here would be abdominal. We'll come back to the thoracic in just a minute. The abdominal cavity, let's go ahead and color this. Now for these colors, you can really use anything. You don't have to use what I use. Um, as long as we just kind of make a note over here. I'm going to circle the number two. Whoa. -oh. And then go over here and color this section the same color. This has got to be the easiest coloring in this whole curriculum. You just, it's like a little kid's coloring book here color this big space. Nothing tricky. You don't have to shade or anything. There. And in that abdominal, you will find stomach, spleen, liver, gallbladder, part of the pancreas, all of the small intestines, and the transverse colon. That's the one that goes across like this. And then down here, number three is pelvic, P-E-L-V-I-C. And circle that little color. So in here we have the bladder, meaning the urinary bladder, and we have the reproductive organs, which in a female, well there be more of them, the uterus and the ovaries and things like that. In the male, I think it's just the prostate that's in there because obviously the male has some organs that are outside the body altogether. And we have the sigmoid colon. Remember the sigmoid colon is like letter S. Sigma is the letter S in Greek, so that's the last part of the colon that goes like that. So let's just put a note also here with the diaphragm. Point to this right here. I'm just going to kind of go this way. Diaphragm. And you can make that a color if you want to. You may want to just leave that to the end. Use some other, well, use a color that you don't want to use for that top part. I'll just make mine brown here. So that's the easiest um, dividing line between cavities. That's a super obvious one. And now for the thoracic up here. The thoracic cavity 
has three smaller cavities inside of it, or it's made up of three smaller ones. So I labeled them A, B, and C just because we already had one, two, and three. So A, this is going to be the pleura. I think I'll, maybe I'll use lowercase because it's A, I don't know. P L E U R A Plera and this is the lungs. So let's see, we need a color for that. Circle it. And of course it's pretty obvious which spaces would be for that. And then B, we have the pericardial cavity, pericardial, and of course, this is around the heart. And let's see, I'm going to make that red just because it's got the heart in it. Again, it doesn't matter what colors you use as long as you go like that and circle it. And let's see, what do I have left? Blue. Okay, what's this last part here? This is the only one with a really complicated name. And actually, the name is written right here for you. Media stinum or stinum, media stinum. Media, and that means middle. And the stinum or stinum part probably refers to the sternum, which is a bone that runs right here. So it's the cavity that's kind of behind the sternum bone area. And actually, as I've noted here, the pericardial cavity is actually inside of this mediastinum cavity. So we have the pericardial inside the mediastinum, inside the thoracic cavity. Remember, I've, I've been saying quite a bit that the body is bags within bags within bags. Everything's bagged, and of course, then the, um, the heart is aligning around itself, so everything's like triple bagged or quadruple bagged in the body. So what else is in the mediastinum? And we'll see it over here. What you can't tell is that it kind of goes around. Well, you kind of go like this if you want to kind of go like that. Although in most pictures, you won't see any color here. You'll just see these two the same color, color and color. That's pretty much what you'll see in most drawings. That's exactly what we have here. So as I've noted here, the superior part is shown here. And over here, you'll see the inferior part is kind of smaller. It goes around down like this. Superior, of course, means on top, inferior, below. So what's in this top part? Well, we have the superior vena cava. And remember in the heart, that's the one that kind of, like, comes in there. The aorta it goes off like this. We've got some other arteries coming in. So you also have the aortic arch in there. And the thymus. If you remember way back to module two in the immunology, if you remember the thymus is the training ground for T cells. It's much smaller in adults than it is in children. The thymus to be there, part of the esophagus and part of the trachea. So it's kind of a mixed bag, shall we say. So over here we just have the side view. I'm going to go and focus in just a little bit more here, like that. Okay. And we can just make them the same colors over here that we have. You can use this one. Here's our pelvic down here. And here's the abdominal. And you notice there's some things sitting outside of here, back here and here. So it isn't in these cavities. There are some things that are behind these cavities 
so we call them retroperitoneal. So the peritoneum is this, this uh, membrane bag, this stuff, the membrane bag. So this is behind the cavity bag. Retro is behind. And we have, if you want to point there, a little bit of the rectum. That's the last part of the intestine. And let's see what else. Behind the abdominal, we've got, this would be maybe the descending colon. And the ascending colon will be kind of behind that. You can see it because it's a, kind of a cross-section thing. And let's see, part of the pancreas right here, maybe? So that's part of a little bit of the pancreas. Some of the pancreas is in, goes in like this, and some of it is out. Also the duodenum or the duodenum, maybe that thing right there. And some of it is in and some of it is out. The kidneys right here. The kidneys are completely behind. They are definitely retroperitoneal. And then these right here, this would be these blood vessels right there. They are behind the thoracic cavity. Okay, so there's the, uh, one of the more difficult words in this lesson, retroperitoneal. All right, so let's keep going here. We got that diaphragm right here, dividing the thoracic from the abdominal. And we've got kind of a side view here of the pleura. Okay, and let's see, this red here, pericardial, and then here, on this one we can kind of show like this, we'll kind of go around showing there's, there's a bottom, that would be the inferior part. And then also, uh, like I said, it's just an FYI, just so that we've covered it. So you can't say, but they never told me that, of course. All right, so I'm mentioning it. Also on an official list, you will see the cranial cavity and the spinal cavity, or sometimes they call it the vertebral. And these are easy, right? Cranium, brain, spine, spinal cord. Okay, so there's all the bags inside of you. So you know what's inside what and a few that are behind all the bags. Now let's go down here and talk about the mesentery or if you're in the UK, mesentery. I'm just going to say mesentery because I think that's pretty much the US pronunciation. So I have some props to show you. We're going to do a little bit of drawing, but you're going to also watch some demos. And I think I'll actually start with the demos because that's what I did to learn about this I went to good old YouTube and started searching and I found a guy in the UK which actually I think I used him for the last one when you did the, the if you did the video bingo so he has one on the mesentery and it was I thought it very very helpful so he used this one here they call it cling film in the UK called plastic wrap all right, here in the U.S., plastic wrap, and he had a model. I don't have as good one as he does, and it's too big to fit on this table, so I'm going to stop the film, and I'm going to reset so I can show you this model. Okay, so here we are over in the art studio. So all the paint's over there, and you might hear some birds chirping in the background because... I'm closer to the front of the house than in my recording studio. Let's prop up my model a little bit and get a better angle on it there. Okay. All right. So, take out the lungs and we're going to focus 
on the abdominal cavity. Take out the liver, there's the gallbladder in the back. Take out the stomach and there's the intestinal unit. Take that out and then because this is a cheapy model so everything else is like on there, really good models. You can take off the kidneys and stuff like that and the spleen but anyways mine that's it. But that's okay because um, the kidneys are retroperitoneal so they can they'll have to be behind there anyways and so are these. Remember the descending aorta and the, the vena cava there. And the only thing that this model really isn't going to be so good for us. I think this is the spleen and the spleen will actually be included in this cavity so we'll have to pretend it's maybe stuck to the stomach or something. So we'll get to the mesentery proper in just a minute. The mesentery is basically made of the same stuff that the body cavity linings are made of. It's all made of serous membrane. Now we mentioned this in a previous drawing that serous membrane I think we saw it around the heart and lungs and it makes a fluid to kind of lubricate things, keep that nice and slippery so things can slip around. So we're going to have this plastic wrap or cling film be our serous membrane. Now the odd thing is that it's the same stuff basically but where it is determines what you call it. So right now it's going to be peritoneum. So the body cavities are lined like this. This will be our bag. Okay, and um, let's see. We'll cut it off there. That I think that's enough. So things behind here, kidneys, right? And these things, these are retroperitoneal. So you can see what we just were talking about. They're behind this peritoneum and what will be in this cavity? This thing and the stomach Put that in right. and the liver and gallbladder and everything. We'll pretend the spleen is in there. Okay and then we'll now we'll pretend it's all one bag here. Seal it up. Okay so there I've made the abdominal cavity. So this is the the peritoneum that encases the abdominal cavity. And when it is found like this, we call this parietal peritoneum because it makes a wall. Right? So this is parietal peritoneum. Now, put this back up again. Now, the organs are kind of also wrapped but in a special way. And this is where the mesentery comes in. When it's wrapped around an organ, you call it visceral peritoneum. The kidneys and the, or I mean the liver and the stomach are wrapped like this. I'm going to set this out of the way for just a second. These guys down. All right, so you can see them there in the middle. Now this uh, kind of goes back to embryonic development, a little bit more of embryology. When the stomach and the liver were forming, let's see, check here. Okay. They kind of had this arrangement with the membrane. Okay. Kind of like this. Okay, with the, so the sheet's a little bit too big, kind of edge like that. They were attached like this, and then this folded in like that. Okay? Now there's a name for this piece right here, and this is called the lesser omentum. The word omentum means having to do with the stomach. And you'll see in one of our drawings, you'll see this right uh, right here coming off you'll see a little bit of membrane sticking off the top of the stomach this is called the lesser curvature and the bottom is called the greater curvature so you'll see some membrane sticking off 
here. And that'll be labeled as the lesser omentum. Now, it, then it goes like this. So you don't really you don't really see it. We're just going to see it as this tiny little strip like that because it gets all folded up. And speaking of embryology, the way that these things got into the bags is kind of interesting. Your digestive system started out as nothing but a gut tube, right? So there's the gut tube. And there's also a structure, um, let's make this kind of into a tube. This is a oversimplification. Experts in embryology might be cringing right now, but okay, like this, sort of next to it. And then as the organs form, so this is going to turn into the entire digestive system. And as the stomach started to form, the bulge would come out and it would press into this, okay? So it would it would go like this, and I'll show you a picture when we get back to the drawing table. It would, it would push out like this and kind of push in like that, and thus it would be wrapped like that. Okay, and then another organ, right, would form, and it kind of grows into the peritoneum. So the wrapping took place right as these organs were forming. Now the most complicated wrapping job was for the intestines. So let me see if I can explain this. All right, get our model back down here. All right, so there's a there's a flap that goes down from the bottom of the stomach, like this. All right, so this is this is a double layer. This is what's confusing. Let's see if I can get this All right. So you see how there's two layers here, right? One, two, All right? So I'm going to press those together, and then what happens is it folds like this, and so now you see how I have four layers here. And where does this end attach to? Right here. Okay, and then it folds down like this and covers. This is a little bit short but it covers the small intestines like this. Now, this is the shortcoming, one of the shortcomings of a cheap model like this. So this is what I grew up learning on, just stuff like this. And I was completely unaware of the mesentery because look, where is it, right? They don't show it. There's no mesentery anywhere. So kids don't even learn about it. Kids are gonna have to learn about it now because the mesentery is officially an organ as of 2012, so I'm going to have to start teaching about it. All right, so you'll see this in our drawing hanging down, except it's going to be cut. I have a little scissor marking, like, like we're going to snip it off right here because it's going to get in the way of the rest of our drawing. But this is what happened. Come down like that, folds, so it's actually four layers, attaches here, and then it lays right on there. So what's the purpose of this covering? Well. Um, they think that part of what it does is if there's inflammation in the small intestine, this part kind of nourishes it. It kind of wraps around it and hugs it in a little kind of membrane blanket and it kind of helps it to heal, sort of. That's one of its functions. And it also just helps keep everything in place. Okay, so this is that, that front. It's going to be called the greater omentum. Okay, so the lesser one is the part that goes on the top, connects it to the liver, and the greater omentum is the one going to be hanging from the bottom and covering the front like that. The most complicated part of the mesentery is, you can't see it on this model. You see the back here, this is, this is going to be called the mesocolon. We'll see that. There's a sheet in the back. 
but the most complicated part is the thing that attaches all these intestines, keeps all those intestines from squirming around. You imagine if these weren't attached, you know, and they just kind of like ooh, sag down eventually, you know, you'd be jumping up and down and your intestines would all be moving around. That would not be good. So they're anchored in place with the mesentery. But for that, we're going to go back to looking at some pictures. Okay, so let's look at this picture and see if we can identify a couple of those things we just saw. This is the membrane hanging down from the bottom. In fact, we could just label it. This is the greater omentum. O M E N T U M. And this up here is the lesser. Lesser omentum. Right, and it connects to liver and this forms an apron I'm gonna call it an apron kind of you know like a kitchen aprons ladies wear that kind of cover that area forms an apron oh, I can put it in quotes because I don't mean really an apron an apron in front of intestines kind of covers the intestines. Okay, I'll let you see that. Okay. And of course, this is the stomach and the duodenum, and you should recognize those by now. And of course, this little thing here, these are my little scissor marks to show that we trimmed it, right? So it would fold all the way down over here, but it's going to get in the way of this part. We want to see this one. Okay, so here's for the difficult squiggly. So we'll get to this in just a minute, but first let's look at some pictures of this part. This this thing, when the membrane stretches here, it's called the mesocolon, and we'll label it in a minute, but we're going to put some things in here, so I'm going to leave off the label for just a minute. Let's look at it. All right, so if you were actually doing surgery, I think this is a surgery on an animal, so don't freak out, maybe a dog or something. This would be maybe the large intestine going around here. And see how it looks kind of really thin? You can almost see through it. Light can go through. It's called translucent. And there's a little bit of blood vessels running through and some fat. So this right here is this. Let's see this nice translucent membrane. And let's see another picture. Here's kind of an older picture. Shows it. It's this right here. And this is this roughly part here we'll talk about in a minute. But this part behind here. And here's another surgery picture. Again, I think it's animal surgery. Showing it right here. This is what we're looking at. Here's kind of a close up of it. And lastly, here's a black and white one, so it's not so gross. So that's what we're looking at. And then in ours, this is where our wigglies are going to go. But you'll notice in this drawing, these blue things represent lymph nodes. So maybe we can add some lymph nodes, lymph vessels, to our drawing also. But this is the, this and that is the mesocolon. So what does the mesocolon do? Well, it sticks the, the intestinal unit to the back wall, like this, okay, in front of your vertebral column there. It keeps the whole cavity stuck to your backbone basically so that it doesn't fall out or move around too much. And the other thing it does is to provide a surface for blood vessels and lymph vessels to adhere to. So it would be a spaghetti mess in here if there was all these blood vessels just running around trying to go different places and they weren't stuck to something. 
you, know, you do a couple somersaults or something, move around, and your blood vessels will get all switched up and tangled and it'd be a mess. So this is where you're going to find the blood vessels. So let's take a red and blue and draw some of these. So well, wait, first let's let's take a look at this picture. I've got a picture. I think that would be good to look at it first. Let's study these vessels. All right, back out a little bit. So this kind of light yellow in the background, that's the mesocolon. And right here, this would be where the small intestine starts. This would be the very end of the duodenum, or the duodenum coming in. And then you would have the jejunum starting, turning into the ileum, and then that's where it would end up right here. That's the end. So they've snipped out most of it. There's the beginning and the end of the intestines. They've removed the intestines and the rest of the mesentery so that you can see the blood vessels. So you'll notice that there's, it looks sort of like a ring around here. See this ring? That's important to notice. And then little spokes going out to the parts of the colon there. And this is the major blood vessel, artery, and vein coming in. This is called the superior mesentery artery. And this will be the superior mesentery vein. Superior always means on top. So the one on the bottom down here that's lower would be the inferior mesentery artery and vein. All right, so let's take a red and a blue and go like this. Somewhere in here, this is going to come in. Here's our incoming vein. And actually, let's make this kind of outer one first so we don't forget about it. You have this kind of rim going around like this, like that, and like this, kind of all around. And then we're going to have a blue one, too, in a minute. And then you have a couple of things going like that. And then this one we can kind of just, just kind of come down like that. Okay, and that's where it comes in. It's kind of poking in from behind the tissue there, okay? And then we also have this vein coming in where we have arteries or arterioles. You've got to have veins and venules. And this will go somewhere like that, along here also. Got spokes running out. Doesn't have to be exactly the same place, but like that. You'd have things running like this. Alright, and you might have a few feeding over to here. Let's see in our picture. It does kind of feed the top a little bit, but this side over here is fed by these. Right, so this section here is fed by these and the section down here is fed by those. So we could put one going up here. Maybe maybe like one going like that or off like this. Okay. That's where they come in right there. Okay, and then we're running into intestines, all these little things from that that ring there. And then also veins. And of course this is one of those places where I think drawings are always misleading because it's going to look like our arteries and veins aren't connected, right? They kind of, the pictures always leave them like little tree branches just going off like that and ending. And people get the wrong impression that they're not connected, but really they'd all be connected. These little arteries will get smaller and smaller and then turn into the venules and come back. Okay. Good enough for our purposes here. And then down here, 
we'd have a big vein coming in like that, or artery in this case, like that, and then next to it, vein coming like that, and it would reach up there too, one would be going behind here. So you see we have this big flat arrow that's blocking our view of a lot of this stuff. And we'll get to that in just a second. Finish our blood supply here. Going off to the feeding the colon. Now, of course, in real life, this is going to be more complicated here. We're going to have to feed the small intestines and be simplified here. there. Okay. Can't make it too complicated or you can't see what's going on. Okay, so we could label these with their names. This would be the superior mesentery artery and vein or mesenteric. So I think I'm going to label it on the side here like this. I'm kind of pressed for space, but I'm going to point to these right here and write superior mesenteric M E S E N T E R I C meaning related to the mesentery, artery, and vein. We'll just say it's both of them. Now that's kind of a hard term. If you just ran across that and you were trying to learn the names of blood vessels in the body and you didn't know about the mesentery, you'd be like, superior mesenteric artery? That sounds really difficult. Well, what is it? But now that we've been talking about the mesentery and all these membranes, it makes sense because these arteries and veins are stuck to this membrane, this mesentery membrane. And let's see, now we actually could, we could label, see this, these blank spots in here, here, I'm trying to indicate behind here, the, the, the uh, the wall behind them, this sheet of membrane that we looked at in those photos, this, you know, this behind here, okay, all this stuff behind here, how you want to indicate that. This is the part of the mesentery called the mesocolon, M-E-S-O-C-O-L-O-N. So this whole sheet behind here is the mesocolon. Now at this point, remember I said about putting in lymph nodes? Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use green because it's kind of different. I think I often use green. Remember there was some line of nodes in there. So they would also be anchored, the little uh, lymph vessels running along here. Anywhere you have blood vessels, you're going to have lymph also. I think that's something they don't emphasize enough. Anatomy stuff for kids. You always have everywhere. There's lymph vessels running through everywhere, your entire body. Okay, so then I'm just going to put a green dot down here like that. So I don't so it's easier to label lymph nodes and vessels in the green. Okay, so the mesocolon is the part of the mesentery that goes like this, behind here, all behind the, between the colon. That's why it's called mesocolon. And one last label before you go on to talk about the small intestine mesentery. These vessels right here, let's label those. These are the inferior 
mesenteric artery and vein. Okay, I almost forgot those. Okay, now I think we're ready to talk about this thing here. So the part of the mesentery, which is actually just called the mesentery, is the part that holds the small intestines together. So here in this picture, we've snipped, like another one, we snipped out the intestines. And in this one, this shows you what it actually looks like. You've snipped off along here. This ruffly line is where the intestines were attached. Now, the reason it's ruffly, I've got to show you a piece of crochet, actually. This will make more sense. All right, so why does it have to be this ruffly shape? Well, the attachment point, the root, they say, of the mesentery is right along this line, along the diagonal. This is where this sheet of tissue is attached. So where it's attached, it's only this long, not that long, and, and pretty straight. Okay, so it's long, like I could actually See on this edge here, this crazy thing. On my crochet, you see there's this edge I could straighten out. It's not that long and it's pretty straight. Let's go a little bit more. It's not that long, right? This edge just slide it along here like this. Now the other edge, how long is this? It goes like this. It's a very very long edge. Now, how do you get this shape with a short edge and a long edge? Well in crochet the way you get it is let's say you start off from here to here you start off with 50 stitches across. You know how you make the little loops in crochet. And you go off 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 11, let's say you make 50 stitches. Well, the next line, you go over here, you make another line, and you put in like 52 or 53 stitches. And the next line, you put in a few more, and by the time you got to here, maybe you'd have 100 or 200 stitches running along this edge. So you put a few more stitches every time you go back and forth and you do another line, you put a few more stitches in. Now this is actually not an unusual shape in nature. You find this other places. This drawing here might remind you of maybe a kale leaf. If you've ever seen kale, it's got really, really roughly leaves or parsley. Or if you have studied ocean science a lot, you might recognize it as a sea slug or a nudibranch. A lot of them have this shape. So there's a whole branch of math that studies this kind of shape. It's called hyperbolic geometry. And it turns out that crochet is actually an ideal medium for studying hyperbolic geometry. Also, a lot of corals kind of have this, this basic shape to them. So you, sometimes you'll find um, crochet coral reefs. That's a, that's a big deal at big museums. Um, people crochet corals and put them together to make a art project, coral reef, which is actually where I got mine. Mine was donated to our crochet coral reef. All right, so here's a piece, let's show a few more pictures. So here's a piece of this stretched out. Here's the short side, and here's the long curvy side, and then they cut. This one has the intestine on it, but if you take scissors and you just snip this off, snip, 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 you're going to get this roughly thing. And here's another picture. We just looked at this a few minutes ago, but we'll see it again here now. This is the mesentery with the intestines snipped off. See, there's where they snipped here, and they snipped there. I guess it's just kind of the thing to do to snip the intestines off in your pictures here so that you can see the mesentery. So in our drawing, we're just going to kind of pick up right here, see where this line is, and draw 
kind of a wiggly. You can just make it any kind of wiggly shape you want because this is really hard to draw. That's why I gave you that picture. You don't have to worry about it. Just make a wiggle line and the drawing, the arrow points to this drawing. So that's a better drawing. I mean, this is just, this is just too difficult to draw. So now we're going to talk about these same parts. Right? Again, over here. But this time we're going to see them in a cross-section view. It's a different angle on them. Right? Same parts, same thing. There's really not much new here. But we're going to see how they wrap. Now, in this drawing, you'll see the reason why the mesentery is now classified as an organ. It used to be this kind of unrelated tissues. Everybody knew the tissues are there. I mean, way back in the like, you know, Renaissance time, you know, this is like 1400s, 1500s. This is a really old drawing, hundreds of years old. But, uh, you know, they see, there it is. They knew these tissues were there, okay? But nobody knew that they were all connected. It was basically one long line all folded up. It was one structure with lots of different ins and outs. Then in about oh, something like 2012, some anatomy researchers in, uh, in Ireland were looking at electron microscope pictures of these tissues. And they realized that some of these things that were folded together, especially this, we're going to see there's four layers that actually have merged to become one layer. But with the electron microscope, you could actually look at the types of cells and see that there are four layers. It actually gives me an idea. Right here in this space, this is, a, this is probably one of the things they were looking at. Let's make a really quick drawing of serous membrane. Remember the stuff that all these things are made out of, what you call it peritoneum or mesentery, the stuff it's made out of is serous membrane. All right, so what does this tissue consist of? All right, so draw right about here, really thin, like that. It's going to be our side view of cells and divide it up into cells, like that. And dividing line. And then make a line kind of going back like this and back like this. It's going to be a perspective drawing. And then like that. Like that. And then we can kind of section these off into cells, very square looking cells. Ours are going to be very square. Not really square. Actually I have some I have some actual photos here somewhere. Here's what this stuff looks like from the top view. If you're looking down like that, it looks like under a microscope. And here's a closer up top view of these cells. Right there, each one of those things is a cell. So that's what they actually look like. But it's easier to understand if we make them square. And we'll label these as what kind of cells do you think these are? Way back from our tissues when we were classifying tissues. These are simple squamous. Very flat. Simple squamous cells, and we could add that secrete fluid, that serous fluid. We could give them a nucleus too, right? Because they're cells. Okay, so it's a sheet, a single layer sheet of cells, squamous. And then underneath here, there is a piece of connective tissue. In fact, I'm just going to use a color like that. They are stuck to a layer of connective tissue. 
which would be made of collagen and elastin. All right, so if they were looking at these and they saw a whole bunch of layers, maybe they saw like pancakes stuck together, they would realize, wait a second, this isn't one solid thing. This is like four layers that merged together. So then they gradually began to piece together what was going on. And actually, I'm going to I'm going to leave the zoomed in. You're really going to have to uh, see this quite close up. Now at this point, I'm going to switch. I'm going to use a pen, like a colored ballpoint pen. If you have any kind of a colored ballpoint lying around, you might want to pause, run, and get it. Or you can use a you could just use a very sharp pencil. You could use one of your colored pencils. Make sure this thing is really, really sharp. All right, so take a second, pause, sharpen your pencil, or go get some very, very uh, fine point pen, like a ballpoint, and then we will draw all these membranes. Okay, so I just realized that uh, my drawing had slid off and I hadn't moved the paper down. I'm demonstrating all this. So what I'm going to do is start over and put paper like that. So I wanted you to see that. So if this stuff is missing, you're not going to panic and think something is wrong. So now let's look at this as an entire structure. And I'm going to try this new pen that I brought in. I'm going to try a gel pen. I hope this purple will show up and I'm going to try very hard to I'm going to have to focus in but then move the paper and focus back out again so let's see how close I can get here all right so we're basically going to draw one continuous line all the way around squiggle 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 and back again so we're going to start right up here above the liver this is the liver liver and down here is the stomach and it looks funny it's round but you know if you slice the stomach in half that way it's going to look round and we're going to start at this bottom line I gave you the end there that little loop so we're going to start right here and go around the liver oh this shows up much better than that blue I was using okay good like that and then see this little dotted line right here right that's my hint go down this is that lesser omentum. Remember I warned you it's going to look really small in this drawing. Actually it's kind of folded and a little bit larger, but that's that lesser omentum. We're going to go around the stomach like that. And then see these dotted lines down here? Those are your guidelines. We're going to go on one side of it like this. It's going to be a lot of layers. Down like that. Back up. The other side like that. Okay, you see, we're going to draw the others in a minute. There's going to be four lines there. But right now, we're going to go around this, like that. And then I gave you that line right there. And then, like this, around this piece of intestine. And back, down like that, along that line, around the intestine, back. Now when you go around an organ, this membrane is called visceral peritoneum. These little, these little lines here, the straight attaching lines there, that's the mesentery proper. Okay, draw more mesentery and then draw more visceral and then back up for a little more mesentery. Follow those dotted lines. Don't draw on the dotted lines. Okay, that's the guideline you're going to have either side. Down on one side, around the intestine, back up. Right, so you see there's two lines there. Right, two lines. Down, around, up, down, around, up, like that. And then again, I gave you this right here. Just trace along there like that. And 
down hole there around see that would be a colon or something there down around like that around here this little loopy thing don't worry about that too much and then down here now this is a female if you want to mark this this is a uterus u-t-r-u-s and this thing down here this thing this is the bladder of course both men and women have a bladder but the female there's a few interesting pockets here so i thought i'd choose the female down along here around the uterus the uterus is in the pelvic cavity so it's outside of this the cavity goes around like that dips down for another little pocket around the top of the bladder like that there's actually names for these little pockets there but we're not going to go into that up here i gave you this trace along that little thing and then where we go from there on the outside just hug this line this is the outer wall now when it forms an outer wall we call it parietal peritoneum parietal means wall all the way back here like this and then come around and join up to the top there sorry okay just all the way up in that so you see we have a continuous right on oh, wiggle, wiggle 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 bag so inside of here if we color it we're not going to but this space between everything is called the peritoneal cavity and we'll label everything in just a second all right but we're not done there's this other little that's kind of the, called the greater cavity there's a little lesser cavity in here we need to come pick this up there's a little place behind the liver where there's it's called the bare spot there's nothing there okay there's no no membrane there but this line is the back of the next little section go back around the liver down get two lines there around the back of the stomach and here's where we're going to pick up the rest of this greater momentum down like this we got a four lines in here there we go back up like that and like that so what we formed here is this greater omentum that lays in front of the intestines All right, let's put a ring around here if you kind of just put a circle can you see that where I, I it's the circle like this but it doesn't go behind there just kind of rings around like that and that shows you that all four of these together make up the greater momentum momentum and they can put in parentheses it's four layers so It's like two double layers stuck together. That's a greater omentum. And where's the lesser omentum? Right here, between the liver and the stomach. So we could actually this, let's point to it in this side. Let's use the space on the top, go like that. That thing right there is the lesser omentum. And we can put between stomach and liver. And if you want to put a note there that it's actually longer and folded, this this doesn't really give you a very good impression of it here, but um output is longer and folded if you want to remind yourself all right lesser momentum I'm going to underline these so I can see them we're gonna have so many words here lesser momentum and greater momentum sorry I'm gonna 
have to do better about shifting the drawing so you can see. Okay, and the next thing we're going to label is right here. We got a nice space. Point to point to that line. When the membrane goes around an organ, we call it visceral. V i s c e r a l visceral peri p e r i t o n e u m peritoneum the visceral peritoneum and then it can put parentheses when it goes around organs because visceral means organs or guts visceral peritoneum so when it is around the outside along the outer wall we call it parietal and for that maybe I'm going to go down here and go label it way down here but that is my bottom one as you can see right there parietal peritoneum and parentheses when it is outer wall parietal means wall parietal peritoneum same type of membrane it just changes its title different locations and then you can point to right here one of these and when it's this one right here these sections where it's this part this part this part that's mesentery that's when we actually use the word mesentery mesentery what attaches to intestines very very small you know you could add something here if you have space in here to the greater momentum um, you could also put here we called it the apron quote I put in quotes because it's not really an apron but it acts like, sort of like an apron apron in front of the intestines kind of that apron thing. And we could use a little space right here. We've got a little bit. We could point to this, the empty space here, which isn't empty. It's filled with fluid. And of course, this space, there isn't that much space here. This is way exaggerated, right? These, There's really not this much empty space. They just wanted to make it clear in your mind what was going on. This is the peritoneal cavity and we could even label here so this thing coming out here this is the rectum that's the end there obviously the rectum the anus there the colon so this would be a little bit of I'll put C O L that would be colon I think too so that's the top of the colon maybe the bottom and I just thought of one other thing to label where's the mesocolon here. Remember the mesocolon is the part of the mesentery. It's all this flat thing in between the colon. Where's that here? Well, if this is the top of the transverse colon, right, the greater omentum goes from the stomach down and back up to that transverse colon here. So this section here would be part of it this these are the small intestines so this is the ruffle right here so this and this would be I think the mesocolon so we could right right here mesocolon and point to that just this 
stretch here and that stretch here. And then one very last thing, I realized that I forgot to show you the picture that I mentioned when we were looking at the plastic model of the body. This is the embryology picture. Zoom in a little bit. Showing how these organs get into the peritoneal cavity. So this is the edge of the gut tube running along here. And this is a little organ budding off, stomach or liver or something. This is the future peritoneal cavity. See, it gets really complicated. The cavity is very squiggly, but right now it's just this very basic shape. Well, an organ comes protruding in here, so it's going to push. Imagine this pushing in and getting larger, and that's what we see here. And do you see how it pushed in the blue bag? Imagine putting your fist into a paper, into a plastic bag or something, right? And it goes like that, and the organ gets bigger and bigger until this blue touches this blue. And we have these two serous membranes joining to form the peritoneum. So actually, peritoneum consists of these two layers of serous membrane. And that's how the organs get into the peritoneal cavity. So if you know this much, you're going to be the genius in your class in college, if you go on to take anatomy in college, you're going to actually understand this mesentery. Just pull out this drawing and you'll be the one explaining this to everyone else. So, good luck.